Hey, my name is Gary, and this is the Man Cave 4301 podcast. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Man Cave 4301 podcast. I'm your host, Big Kev. I'm sitting here today with Gary Drum, a producer and host of the Killing a Fat Guy podcast from all the way in Texas of the US of A. I welcome Gary Drum as my first international guest. Gary, thank you for joining me on the podcast. Absolutely. Very, very glad to be here. Awesome, mate. Well, how about we, we start off with the, the whole concept of killing the fat guy? Where did it sort of stem from? Uh, yeah, just let us know what was the motivation for killing the fat guy? Well, it's, it's kind of long story so i'll try to give you the the brief um the brief version of it when i was uh in my early 30s i probably weighed somewhere in a neighborhood of a, almost 350 pounds um officially the highest official weight i ever had was 345 and um i started getting into personal development and started studying psychology and motivation and life coaching and things of that nature and, and studied a little bit of philosophy. And I was, I was keeping, I was writing a blog, just kind of expressing some of the things that I was discovering on this journey as I went through uh, learning more about, you know, what motivates people and, and it got into identity about who we think we are as people and it occurred to me that there were really like two people living in my head there was this fat guy who just kind of sat around and bitched and moaned about his life and didn't really do anything to change anything you know i i usually say that it I, you know just sitting on television sitting on the couch watching television eating doritos and just bitching and moaning about his life. And that was one sort of idea that I had in my head of who identity was. And then I had this other idea of this sort of fit version of myself, this fit guy who wanted to go out and experience things and, and live life and, and do things in a, a healthier way and start to, and, sort of an idealized version of myself. And this was back in 2012 when this whole concept originally came about. And I just, I just thought, you know, I, I got to kill this fat guy, this fat guy identity. He's got to go. And, you know, cause it, it was something that I had struggled with pretty much through most of my adult life to that point. And, um, you know, so, I, I just, I, I had noticed over, you know, I got married when I was young, I was 26 years old and I was in relatively good shape when I got married. And then just one thing after another and time after time after time. And then I ended up putting on more and more and more weight. And, you know, I would kind of get motivated and go out there and hit the gym really hard for three months. And then I would kind of just stop. And I realized, you know, at that, with the whole killing a fat guy idea, that it's like that, that there's a whole mindset around that, that fat guy has a mindset, that fat guy has particular thoughts that move him to do the things that he does or to do the things that he should do, you know. And so that's kind of how I came up with killing a fat guy. And so I started blogging about that, started talking about that more and more and exploring that idea. Um, and I do a lot of journaling. So I really wrote a whole bunch of stuff in my journals about trying to identify what those thoughts were, you know, that kept coming in my mind and shutting me down and preventing me from moving forward. So that's kind of where it came from. I think it's a great concept. Like, when when I heard you say that, it, it it told me a lot about myself, like, and I completely related with it because, you know, 
one thing that sticks out with me is in my life, I had that that same guy living inside my head. Uh, the the two guys fighting with each other. I would, yeah. One thing that sticks with me is I was in the shopping center one day and I was at Woolworths getting some groceries, and I walked past the deli section and I've got uh, like chicken wings and and the chicken fries and all that sort of stuff in there. And I thought, oh, they they look pretty good. And then I was like, no, I don't need it. Right. <laughs> and then and then this this fat guy inside of me said, nah. No, you'll be right. And trying to justify why I should buy these things. Right. And I call myself doing it and I thought, you know what? No, fuck that. You're not going to win today. It's not right. your, it's not yeah. your day to win. So I, I didn't, I didn't get them. And I just, yeah. I, I, I wish that, uh, a lot of the time that that guy would win again, but sometimes it, he just doesn't. So yeah, what, what sort of, um, what sort of process do you go through if you sort of get those feelings, what keeps you on track? Well, I, I, I kind of, my, my original idea with killing the fat guy is that, you know, you'll, you'll kill the fat guy once and then he's dead, right? He's no longer there. And I, I've come to realize that's not really the case. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a case of really coming down to making that decision to, to kill that fat guy idea every day, right? It's something you have to just say, you have to be diligent about it. You know, I, I studied a little bit of, of Buddhism and Buddhist philosophy, and I really like the idea of, of mind, mindfulness in, in Buddhism. And what mindfulness is really all about is just keeping, paying attention to what you're thinking, right? And and sometimes that's really easy to do because sometimes we're engaged with ourselves, and sometimes it's kind of it can be difficult to do. Um, so my my process of how I, how I work to stay on track. And, and I have good days and I have bad days like everybody else, but how I work to stay on track is just, I try to stay mindful of my emotional state and I try to stay mindful of what I'm doing. Um, in fact, I, I created the killing a fat guy, um, Facebook community as kind of a, uh, as kind of an accountability network, right? So I'll get on there and I'll share what's going on with me. Um, and, how I'm doing in my process so that I share that with a lot of people because that kind of holds me accountable to myself, right? The reason I started the podcast was it's another, it's another form of not only getting the message out there and expressing these ideas and talking about this stuff, but it's also another tool for me remaining accountable. You know, I can't really go out there and talk about killing a fat guy and then go chow down on, you know, burgers, two and, fries. burgers and, 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 you know, two large fries. Yeah. And, and, and so that's kind of what it helped me do. That's kind of my process. Part of my process is just remaining mindful and then putting some kind of accountability around it so that I can, yeah, I'm trying to put a message out there and I want that message to be consistent and I want that message to mean something. I and thought so about really doing exactly the same thing. Yeah. And and it scares me because I don't want to let anyone down. Exactly. You, know? you kind of you, yeah, you can kind of use that that fear as a motivation to keep going, you know, yep. and to keep working on what you're doing. So that's yeah, that's really kind of I mean it's a, obviously it's a lot deeper than just that, but that's kind of a surface level idea of what it, what I really do. Yeah. So I, I did have a look through your Instagram page uh, a little bit there and uh, just to get some some context of what you're actually doing there. Yeah. And um, I saw a photo there where you're holding your shorts out. And yeah. And <laughs> you can see a bit of your side there. One of my biggest fears is 
well, one of the things that I'm concerned the most about, which I shouldn't be, is my appearance afterwards. Yeah. If I do lose the weight, what am I going to look like? I'm just going to look like a saggy bag of shit. And mm. that scares the shit out of me. Like, uh, you know, no, look, I've seen people on YouTube that have done it and they embrace right. it afterwards. And yeah. I, I really hope that I can get to a, a point in my mindset where I can do that. So, and, and to be comfortable, like I'm, I'm not the sort of guy that gives a shit about what people think of him, um, or what I look like, but I don't know. And I don't know why it's, it's so predominant in my thoughts, mm-hmm. but it's, it does, it scares the living shit out of me. And, uh, you know, yeah. cause you look at these guys that are really fit and you go, Oh geez, I'd love to look like that. And then you look at yourself and think, if I lost that weight, I'm, I'm never going to look like that anyway. I'm going to right. you'd need surgery and, and all this other stuff to, you know, and then you'd get disheartened and then you sort of fall back down into the slums, you know? Right. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I really need to find some tools and, and some practices to, to keep me focused and, and, um, yeah, it, it's, it's tough. It's, it's not, it's not easy. It's not just a physical thing. It's a, it's totally mental as well. Right. Right. And people don't get you that. Know, you know, there's a, there's a great guy on YouTube. Um, his YouTube channel is obese to beast. Oh, that's the guy. That's the yeah. guy that I watch. And yeah. he is, he is really phenomenal in talking about, you know, what he's doing with the loose skin and all that kind of stuff. And, one of the things that, because I had the same idea, and I mean, I've still got, I've still got some belly fat that I'm working off, but you know, I'm talking to my doctor about what my goals are. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm six foot tall, and you know, I'm a pretty stout build guy, so I can I can lift heavy objects. <laughs> pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty not well. smart, but I can lift heavy things. <laughs> <laughs> so. So what I really enjoy is, is, is in the process. I enjoy, like I'm doing weight training, like just strength training and muscle building. And, you know, over the last six months or so, I've added a couple of inches to my arms just in doing weight training. And I told my doctor, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about the belly fat stuff that's going on right now, because right now I'm, I'm deciding to, to build the muscle right and let the muscle do the work of helping to burn the fat and you know when you talk about the the whole idea of loose skin and stuff like that yeah i i've i've got a little bit of that down around just below my belly area now because i've lost quite a few inches and it's a little bothersome you know Mm. it's something that kind of bothers me a little bit but I kind of, I kind of take, you know, the obese to beast guy. I kind of take his, his thoughts on that to heart. It's way better to have a little bit of loose skin flopping around than to be dealing with diabetes and hypertension and, you know, and, and all the stuff that comes with being obese. Mm. And so for me, my thoughts on it are one of the things that I, I have kind of done for myself in preparing myself when I get to that point. Cause right now what I'm doing is I'm doing a lot of weight training and I'm actually, I, I turn 50 next year. And so my goal is to actually do a, uh, a men's physique competition next year. Um, and so that's why I'm spending a lot of time on building the muscle and all that kind of stuff. And there's another guy on Instagram, um, uh, what is his name? I think it's positive Pat um, is his name. And he, uh, he was huge, man. He was, he was like, I think over 500 pounds. Wow. And, and he's a bodybuilder now. So, you know, it's just incredible stuff. Now he did go through and get the surgery. I'm trying to look this guy up while I'm talking to you here. Yeah, you're right. Um, But um, he, yeah, he, he went through and he went ahead and got the surgery uh, and, you know, got all that stuff taken off. And, and the guy looks like a beast now. I mean, he looks like a bodybuilder. And 
you know, I'm sure the whole, and he's tattooed all over the place and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, getting skin removal surgery when you're covered in tattoos has got to be a little bit, a little bit of a stretch because, yeah. you know, you don't want to mess up those tattoos. Um, but he, um, he just looks like a beast. You know, he looks like a bodybuilder and that's, he's a big, big guy. I think he's like six, four or something. He's really a big guy. And I think that that's part of, that's part of the journey, you know, accepting where you are and um, figuring out, you know, what do you want to do in the future with that? How do you want to handle that? So I think like for me, one of the things that I've done is I've gone and watched a lot of videos on YouTube about people who are, who have lost a lot of weight and some of them are like obese to beast and some of them have, you know, the loose skin. And I listen to their explanations about why they don't care, you know, or why it doesn't bother them. Um, obese to beast is his, his, his big thing is, you know, I view this as, as battle scars. This is, this is telling my story, you know, cause he was also pretty huge. Hmm. Um, and so he kind of, he says, he, I kind of view it as, this is part of who I am. And, and, and it's also a reflection of the amount of work that I've done. So it's kind of, a, it could be used as a daily reminder, you yeah. know, and, and coaching psychology, we talk about the frame that we put on something, right. Which is you think of a picture and how, how a frame can change an appearance of a picture, right. So you can have a, very basic little wooden frame around the priceless painting and it just looks like a painting or you can get one of those really ornate you know beautifully cut and crafted frames and put it around that and it looks just far more valuable and from a mindset perspective that's that's called you know reframing the idea and so when it comes to that whole idea of losing a lot of weight and having loose skin i i love obese to beast point of view on it. You know, he's reframed that whole idea to say, this is part of my journey. This is part of who I was. And it's a reflection of the work that I've done. And I just, I think that's an awesome reframe for that. Yeah, it is. You know, you know it's, a, it's and, a really and, positive way to look at things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and you know, there's also the, abs the aspect of, of getting the surgery. I've seen countless situations where people have gotten the surgery and you know you see a few that are like weird where your nipple is a little over here or something you know stuff like that um but you see a lot of them that are really good too mm. you know it's just a matter of finding one that's highly recommended and you know and has the resources to do a good job and make it look good to go from 500 pounds to basically bodybuilder cut it's weight and you know showing incredible. your six-pack abs that's pretty phenomenal and he did the surgery, that positive Pat guy. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. I contemplated getting the um, the lap band surgery, mm -hmm. but I didn't want. I don't know. I I, I saw it as a, a as the easy way out. You know, yeah, like you're cheating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And cheating got me here. <laughs> right. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, well, see, I, I, I know people who have done the lap band stuff and, um, you know, you can do the lap band thing and then come back five years later and put all the weight on, mm. right, back on because it, 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 it's something that stretches out over time. And so, yeah, you can stretch it, it, it back is, out again. It yeah. is kind of an easy fix. You know, so, so my mantra for the whole fat guy, killing a fat guy thing, is there's a there's a mantra to it and it is that is mindset nutrition training right mindset nutrition training those are the three key things that you need to get fit not lose weight because lose weight is losing weight is not really your goal right your goal is to get fit and be healthy so that you can go out and experience life and once you recognize how being overweight is hindering you in that process, then it changes your whole, your whole idea of it. And so the three key areas are your mindset, your nutrition, and your training. You have to get the, it starts with mindset for a reason, right? Cause I can do nutrition and training 
all day long and continue to try to do nutrition and training. But if I don't have the right mindset, I'm eventually going to quit. I'm eventually going to give up, right? Because nutrition and training works, but it's hard, man. It's not, it's not an easy thing to do. It, 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 it's challenging. Mm. And if, and I mean, you're talking about changing your life, you know, you're talking about changing. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into that. You're not just changing your outward appearance. You have to change your mind and you have to, you have to disassociate from this old identity that you have of who you are. And that's hard. You know, there's a great quote that says, um, uh, I'll paraphrase the quote. It says something to the effect of, uh, it, 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 it's, it's impossible to change without pain because for a man to change without pain, because you're the sculptor. You know, you're the Can, one you're the I'll one just, doing I'll, the chiseling. I'll just get you to say that you know? again because you, you cut out and I really want to hear it. Yeah. So it, it's impossible for a man to change without pain because you are both the marble and the sculptor. So you're the one you're 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 chipping away at things like a sculptor does, but what you're chipping away at is part of who you think you are. Yeah. You know, you're chipping away at yourself. And so I think it's, you know, so the mindset, the mindset is critical in that journey. Um, just because it, it, it makes it's, it starts there. Everything that you do in life begins between those, that three pounds of gray matter between your two ears, right? Everything, everything you accomplish, everything you ever experience, your entire life is lived inside your head. So, and then nutrition, obviously, we talk about the lap band thing. Lap band doesn't teach you nutrition. That's right. It doesn't teach you how right? to eat properly. How to eat properly. It just teaches you, it just conditions your body to try to eat less. But I've known people who've gone through the lap band thing, and that's not to say that it does. it's not successful. Obviously, it, it, it has been oh, successful. I've seen major success from it. That's why yeah, it was so, so appealing. You know, and, and, and for some people it might be beneficial, but I think that, you know, that nutritional aspect is highly important. And then of course, training, you know, I had a friend of mine a few years ago tell me, you know, I've talked about working out, you know, I got to go to the gym and work out. And he told me he was a super, super fit guy, very healthy guy. And he says, you know, when you stop thinking about this as working out and start thinking about it as training it'll change your whole perspective. And I'm like, holy shit, that's exactly right. You know? And, and I, I kind of journaled about that. And I'm like, yeah, because what I'm really doing here is I'm training for life, right? I'm training to live the best version of myself that I can live. And, and part of that training is to get out there and get in the gym and do my work and my exercises and all that kind of stuff. You know, my son is a, is a state level, um, track runner and that kid, he, he trains ridiculously hard for those events, you know, and he, he's, he's come really close. He had a, a state competition this year and he was the only comp competitor running in three different events. And, oh, wow. um, <laughs> and he, but he came in really close on all, all of them, you know? And, and it's because he just has this ridiculous training uh, mindset about things. He's willing to put in the work. And I think that's, that's what it really takes is, you know, mindset, nutrition, training, get your mindset, right. Learn the nutrition and then do the training, learn and do the training. So. I'd like to go through your routine and mm -hmm. to see what kind of stuff that you're doing in the gym. Okay. So what I do is I do a lot of weight training and I do um, incremental advancement within a particular workout that I'm doing. So if I, uh, I'll start out, um, like I, I st and I do different muscle groups on different days. So I do arms and shoulders, you know, one day 
and I'll do back and chest and, and lats another day, and then I'll do legs another day. Um, and then I try to do abdominals two or three times a week. I don't do cardio, uh, or if I do, I'm doing it like on a road machine or something, mostly because cardio takes a long time to get And it's great for burning calories while you're doing cardio, right? So you'll burn calories off for 30 minutes while you're doing cardio, and then your body will continue to burn off those calories for the next 30 minutes. Whereas with weight training, as you're building muscle mass, your body continues to burn calories for a couple of days after, after a good weight training session. Yeah, and of wow. course, obviously, you know, you advise anybody to talk to their doctor about this kind of stuff before they go out and do this. But um, I, I, I just enjoy doing the heavy stuff. So I'll do, I'll do arms one day and then I'll do uh, between three and five sets of exercises, but I'll start like probably 60% of my max. And then I'll just keep going up from there until I've finished out the set. And if I'm feeling really good that day, I might try to go beyond whatever my max was before, you know, just to see if I'm building strength. And I'm finding that that's working because it's building strength pretty well. Um, and I do that with all the different exercises. So curls and, you know, bench presses and deadlifts. I love deadlifts. Deadlifts are awesome because um, they work so many different muscle groups at the same time. Um, but that's, that's kind of my routine with the training aspect is I just, I just really, I try to push myself not to the point of injury, although I did injure my shoulder last night. Uh, oh, I saw I the post done. on that. And I was like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> damn it. Um, you know, so I'm trying to, I'm going to give my shoulder a rest for a week or so. Um, but you know, that, that's really what I do. I just, I go in there with a goal for that day. And my goal is to get through, um, the whole arms and shoulders exercises for the day. And I'll have, and I, I, I look on bodybuilding.com. Um, I've got books on different exercising techniques to do for different muscle groups. I've got a book that's just dedicated to dumbbell exercises for the whole body. Um, and you know, and then I'm learning more about compound exercise or exercises that work more than one, one that work more than one muscle group at a time. So like the, like the deadlift is the one that works a lot of muscle groups at the same time. The squat is another one that does that. And so I'm trying to, I'm actually putting more of that into my routine, but yeah, just go in there with a goal, have a set number, ha have a set of exercises that you that you uh that you want to do for the for the day you know put on some hard blast and hard rock music in your headphones and go lift heavy shit metal that's really it's gotta be heavy metal <laughs> metal <laughs> yeah my my, my go-to bands for lifting are disturbed yes and uh breaking benjamin Those yeah are the two right I listen to most like you should you should often. really try some five finger death punch that stuff uh, is, yeah, I, that stuff is good. Got, I got a friend of mine that does that actually. He listens to Five Finger Death Punch. Yeah. So yeah. I like your friend. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but that that's that's really kind of the idea on the training. What so, do you what what do you deadlift? Uh my I I almost pulled a three eighty five a couple weeks ago. So um I, I, I got 90% of the way up. I couldn't lock my knees, which is, which is essential for the deadlift. So my max that I have totally done is I think 365 was the max that I've done, um, which is not really a lot. Uh, there are, there are obviously guys that deadlift a whole lot more than that, but I'm so, also, I also so don't you, deadlift you're, every day, you're talking so. to someone that's south of the border here. <laughs> What's that in kilos? <laughs> oh, I, uh, I don't know. What is that in kilos? Yeah, yeah I'm going to have to, quick. I'm going to have we'll to find that out do really some quick. conversions. So 300, 355 pounds or 65 pounds, 365 pounds in kilograms. So 360, 165 pounds. 0.56 kilos. That's still pretty impressive. Like, I don't know if I could do that. 
Yeah, it's it you know it's something that I mean it's not it's not Eddie Hall you know Eddie Hall is like the world record holder in the deadlift and I think he lifted 500 kilos but you know I'm not a professional strongman I think it was 500 kilos was it 500 Yeah 1102 pounds half oh. a ton literal half a ton man Yeah that's the that's the world record right now His legs must so, be like tree trunks Dude, he got a concussion from that. Actually, what? You can go online, go online and watch. Uh, there's a there's a video on YouTube where you can see Eddie Hall, 500 kilogram deadlift, and then watch that. And then usually there's a link to him about the after effects of that, where he ended up with a concussion as a result because that's more weight than any human being has ever deadlifted in the history of the known history of the world. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a, a literal, a human being literally lifting a literal half a ton. Yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn. It's a masterful feat. I, I, I love Eddie Hall. Eddie Hall is awesome. You know, so I, I watch a lot of strongman stuff. And I and I push myself to do more of that kind of stuff, you know. So that's really what I do. That's, that's where you get your inspiration from. Yeah, I do. I, and and you know, and one funny thing about strongmen is they're not they're not usually flat bellied, six pack ab, no, you know, men's health fit health and fitness magazine cover guys. They've usually got a little bit of a belly thing going on. But what's funny about them also is when they decide to cut. It comes quick. Like Eddie Hall dropped like, I don't know, like 45, 50 pounds. Just, it seemed like it was overnight, but it was just, he had that whole belly thing going on. And then all of a sudden he's got a six pack going on. And it's like, <laughs> what the hell happened there? Son of a bitch. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's just, but, but they also, they have to eat a ridiculous amount of food yeah. to keep up with all that. Um, Cause they're, they're burning to through 20, 30,000 calories a day. Yeah. And, wow. Yeah, that's I, I, you know my my I I eat maybe twenty five hundred to three thousand a day, so <laughs> you know that's just crazy. So, uh, I love this shirt that you've got. So that's that's what I do. Oh yeah, no 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 the yeah, one my son uh, the one oh, on the one Instagram the killing a fat guy shirt. Yep, where do I get one? Um, actually, I haven't been selling those. Uh, I I had those custom printed. Um more for myself um but i actually have had a couple of other people request them um but if i ever do sell them i'll put them up on my website which is just killing a fat guy.com yep but yeah just i got one that says mindset nutrition training and then on the back of the shirt it says um i'm not sweating i'm making fat cry oh i love and, it <laughs> and, and uh I'm going to get another one. I'm thinking about getting another set of shirts printed up that have the mindset nutrition training on the front. And then on the back, I'm going to have it say failure. Failure is the goal. Cause you know, when you're talking about bodybuilders and weightlifters, when they talk about strength building, they, they, they work out till their muscle fails. Yeah. Right. So failure is the goal. And so I'm going to get that printed up and put it on my shirt. That's as well. cool. I love the the I'm, making us making sweat cry, uh, fat cry, <laughs> making fat cry. That yeah. is that is. I saw magic. that somewhere one time. I thought that would be an awesome T-shirt. So yeah, I'm going to get one made. <laughs> yeah, I think I went on to uh, uh, just some website online that does shirts and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, and it was and it's great for me too because. I, I I wear that that stuff in the gym. It's always interesting. I've got another one that says I'm. I it just says on the front I am killing a fat guy, and it says that on the front and the back, and that's a real conversation starter. Like people, like on the back it says, "Ask me how I am killing a fat guy." Yep. And people walk up to me and have a conversation, and then I get a chance to talk to them about what I'm doing, you know, and and. Ex explain the whole concept to them and stuff like that and i get you know people that follow me off of that so yeah that's awesome that's really cool yeah yeah you know i i think um it's a good way to get your followers up that's for sure yeah exactly <laughs> well i mean i've got i've got a i've got a pretty good following on um on on facebook i think i've got close to 1200 people on facebook that are following the killing a fat guy page yep um and 
My podcast is growing. I just started that a few weeks ago. Um, I also um, had been doing, I haven't done it in a couple of weeks, but I was doing a Mindset Monday thing on YouTube. Like if you just go to MindsetMondayTV.com, it goes right to this page on my website that you can go and watch YouTube videos where I talk about all the different mindset stuff that's related to, you know, the whole killing a fat guy thing. So that's, I'm going to um, have to get on that's to that. how that works. That was, yeah. And that's, um, what was that called Mind, again? Mindset Monday TV. Awesome. I just, I just sent it to you on the chat. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay, so uh, another thing that I was really interested in was you were talking about Stockholm Syndrome and mm, how it yeah. relates. So, yeah, the, the, that was one of the podcast episodes. Um, it, it, it occurred to me that what, what Stockholm Syndrome is is when, when a person who is being held captive develops a type of intimate relationship with their captor, yep. right? And, and it occurred to me that that's kind of how it works when you're overweight and you're, you've got this thought, this identity of this overweight guy and you kind of develop this Stockholm sort of related syndrome to food and to habits that you have, you, you, you kind of fall in love with this old, with this way of thinking, um, you know, to your point about walking past the hot wings the other day, you know, uh, it, it draws you it does, and you're, you're, you're in love with it. And it's, and the sad thing is it's killing you. Mm. Right. And, and, that's kind of what happens with Stockholm syndrome, like people who are captive in that situation. And that's not to belittle people who are seriously in Stockholm syndrome situations or to, or to. No, to it's make just a relatable that. thing. Yeah. It just was something that kind of connected in my brain. It was like, it, it was like, holy crap. It, it's like, I've got this love affair with this life that's killing me or that yeah. could kill me at any minute. And how do I disconnect with that? So I started looking into, um, you know, how they how they get people out of Stockholm syndrome situations, and it, it that's a that's a whole another conversation for another day. <laughs> but it, it occurred to me that the that the the kinds of things that they do with people who are in Stockholm syndrome, you can I think you could probably use that in people who have these these unhealthy relationships to food and lifestyle. And because it's it's all it's all in your head, right? It's all a relationship. And so I'm actually looking into more about how Stockholm syndrome is treated, and trying to figure out if there's a way to really pull some of that information out and try to formulate that into this whole killing a fat guy sort of mission. Yeah. So awesome. Um, you got some pipes on you too, bro. Some what? Some pipes. I Pi saw, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, my, I saw uh, you singing my... on Instagram and dad, you, you, you do quite well. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I, I sing for a, a, a local band that does originals and I just started a, um, a group that, do, that we're doing uh, journey songs. We're going to do old journey tunes. So yeah, that's kind of my passion. And that's part of another, another thing that I want to do. You know, it's, 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 it's not, if the secret to killing a fat guy is it's not so much about killing the fat guy as it is about creating this ideal version of myself that I want to be. Yep. And, and so I'm, I'm launching out there, putting a message out about what this is, what this fat guy thing is doing how do you identify this guy? How do you identify the thoughts that make him possible? You tear those thoughts apart. And how do you create a vision for who you want to be and, and start moving towards that ideal version of yourself? 
you know that's what it's that's ultimately what it's, it's sort really of like about. a military sort of breaking you down to to the bare essentials and rebuilding exactly. yourself exactly exactly you're breaking only what you're breaking down is all of this stuff that's just ultimately terribly terribly destructive for you you know um and that but but the end goal is not to just tear down the end goal is to tear down and simultaneously build up mm. you know so that's kind of where i'm going with that it's very inspirational man well there, thank you it's it's great thank stuff yeah i really yeah, it's, it's really really it's enjoy really it. it's something that's really um it's something that's really something that's really on my heart you know to to because i know there's so many people out there struggling with this stuff yeah and if we can if if we can if we can help people along their journey to to get to where they want to go that's that's the whole thing that's what it's all about it's just helping people you know get to their ideal yeah and live their best life so well, yeah. well done man well done uh you've certainly inspired me and you've so well, certainly I, given me a few more tools to to better myself as well. So um, I'll probably go to, back to the gym tomorrow, <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll go and see my yeah, yeah. because I I actually I'm actually part of a gym, but I haven't been for months. You know, so yeah. No, that's that's a, that's another thing that people do. You sign up for these gym memberships, and then you're on there, and then you're um, yeah wasting you know, your money you're wasting money and you're wasting time so yeah uh, sorry i got an email for a thing for work here no that's fine you go for it man oh i got a call coming up in a few minutes oh in two minutes all right well in that case we will let it go <laughs> and uh give yourself a plug mate oh yeah absolutely uh for more information on what i'm doing you can just go to my website, it's uh, just killingafatguy.com. Uh, there's, there's, that's my blog, and there's links to all of the other stuff that I do, uh, social media, YouTube, the podcast. Um, I might even start selling T-shirts. I don't know. Do it. <laughs> we'll do it because those quotes are sick. <laughs> uh, and then there's also a book. Uh, the book is called Killing a Fat Guy, and it goes more in depth into the journey of how I got there, how I got to this point, and what I've really kind of done in identifying who this, who this fat guy was in my head and how I'm going to get rid of him. So that, and all that stuff is on killing fat guy.com. So, yep. Well, mate, thank you very much for joining me on this podcast. It, it's been inspirational. It's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you for being my first international uh, absolutely test. So, um, absolutely. I wish you hey, all. Hey, we the... got it though. We got the test done. That's pretty cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, no worries. And you know what? I think I think it turned out pretty well. Judging that we're probably uh, you know halfway across the earth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so it, we've done well. So, mate, I wish you all the best in the future, mate, and um, I'll certainly keep in touch with my progress. And... Absolutely, yeah. F feel free to ping me anytime, and, and yeah. uh, if you've got questions or stuff, let me know. Yep. Absolutely. Well, Gary Drum, thank you for joining me on the podcast. Thank you very much, Ellis. I greatly appreciate it. No worries, mate. Take care. Have a great afternoon. All right, bye. Bye.